So strength builds might have been slightly nerfed in the new update, but that doesn't mean they don't wreck the endgame in Elden Ring. Today we're gonna take a look at a perfected strength build that takes advantage of not just heavy weapon scaling, but also multiple buffs that will ensure no enemy nor boss can last more than a couple of shots. Well, with the exception of some of the really high HP enemies, but everything else will die instantly and I will guide you through the entire process of making this absolute beast of a build. Start Starting with a quick overview of the build once fully completed, it looks something like this. We will make use of heavy colossal weapons. Early on that means the colossal greatsword which is going to require 31 points into strength at a minimum but it has a great reach, it's an early acquisition and it's overall very powerful even in the end game. Later once you reach the capital and can spare those 60 points into strength, you'll switch to the giant crusher colossal hammer which yes it has a lower reach but it deals way higher damage. The reason we use these weapons and nothing else is because we're gonna make use of jumping heavy and jumping special attacks when having either one of these weapons or power stancing them with a copy of them. That's not the only thing that we will use though before every fight, there's also three spells in total that we will use to quickly gain almost four times the damage we normally have. This is the reason why we're gonna make use of the basic seal with this and also have a bit of faith with it as well, either 15 points with just one of these incantations or 25 if you want to make use of both the golden vow and the flame grant me strength incantation. And I know what you're about to say, how is flame grant me strength even useful in the case of this build? Well let me demonstrate. Starting with this build, my default attack power rating at this level is precisely 900. Now if I were to also cast a golden vow in this case, this would increase my attack power to 1030. So that's precisely 15% more damage. But watch what happens if I also cast a flame grant me strength. Surprisingly, it still further works at raising my attack power by another 20% at precisely 1243. So between these two, that means a difference of about 37% in terms of attack power, which is definitely going to be needed if you want to like one shot most of the things in the game. And it's definitely helpful since both of these can last up to 90 seconds so you literally don't have to worry about them in most of the fights. Now for melee users we will also add the Royal Knight's Resolve in the mix which is a Nash of War that was fixed in the previous update but only for casters. For everybody else who uses melee it still absolutely works at giving another 80 to 100% damage increase on your next swing. Now to acquire this Ash of War you do need to reach that fog room under the Volcano Manor. There's plenty of guides out there that already covered this, you pretty much have to start from the academy, schoolhouse, classroom, side of grace and make your way down this wheel all the way until the abductor here at the bottom that will kill you and it will teleport you on the other side at the volcano and just have to make your way through this church, defeat a boss over here and then over the balcony until you yeah, pretty much reach the secret area. Again, there's gonna be some links down below since this is going to be quite a lengthy process. Now for the weapons, you can get these quite easily actually. The earliest is obviously going to be the Colossal Greatsword right here in the northern side of Kaelid by the main road. There's going to be a caravan that holds the Greatsword. Meanwhile, if you want to go straight for the Giant Crusher, you do need about 60 points into strength and you can find this just south of the Outer Wall Tree, south of Grace in Lindell. There's going to be an enemy camp here that holds another caravan with the weapon inside of it. For both of these weapons, what you want to do is to actually apply the Ash of War and set the affinity to have so that you can make the most out of that strength scaling since you pretty much reach the maximum strength scaling with both of these weapons when fully upgraded. Now in terms of some of the other pieces you're going to want to make use of the raptor's black feather armor and the claw talisman to maximize your jumping attacks. In the case of the armor this provides a 10% damage increase while the talisman gives you another 15% so that's a 25% between both of them. To get the claw talisman you need to head over to the raptor Emperor Tower Grace back at the Stormvale Castle and take up the stairs so that you can reach this upper balcony past that elevator. Once here, just use the pile of bags to jump over the wall and make your way like I'm doing here using these rooftop rails. From here, just drop down with the enemy bird, try to kill it because it's gonna be annoying and just make your way northwest to the next rooftop until you see this collapsed pillar. Make your way up using my same route until you reach this kind of like tower with a 
a big ladder and once you use that you can reach the top which is going to give you that talisman now there's also a ritual sword talisman that we further use to further buff up our damage it's not necessarily needed but you can add another 10% damage when at full health with this which you will be at most of the time since you're the one initiating the fight you get this from the Lux ruins just north of the Altus plateau set of grace so simply head over there past this church and the enemies and just drop down into the underground cellar you have to defeat a mini boss here but once you do that you can open up a second door behind it and it's going to hold that talisman for you one final item you can apply is going to be the omen smirk mask this is going to be acquired nearby the royal balcony waypoint in the capital so you just have to jump over this nearby canals into the next area with the church kill this enemy and you get the guaranteed mask that provides another nice two points into strength so you can reach the minimum requirements way easier with this build or just get some extra damage on top for the rest of the items and the incantations i've already explained these many times in the past so without repeating myself go ahead watch these videos or just use any of the other guys that already exist on the platform but in terms of the strategy and the gameplay here is what you'll want to do before every fight you will want to start with the golden vow and the flame grand me strength incantations they do require 25 points into faith so that's the max you need with this build but it's definitely worth it for that additional 37 percent damage increase that it lasts for a whole 90 seconds so you rarely have to reapply these if ever and they last for a very long time now right before you reach the enemy also make sure you apply that royal knight's resolve this provides another 80 to 100 percent damage increase to your next swing but be careful because it only lasts for about eight seconds before it fully drops off so you don't want to take too long before reaching the enemy after applying that buff to your weapon and doing all of this properly ensures that you can completely one shot most of the early and mid game bosses and then only require like one extra swing or two to finish off the later on bosses in case you screwed something up or in case the enemy has way more hp than you anticipated you can simply disengage reapply the ashes of war and jump back in with a heavy attack to yeah just take down the enemy in the next couple of swings now on the other hand you can also use power stancing with this build which is basically using two of the same types of weapons both the great sword as well as the hammer can be duped or copied you can just use a friend and go in multiplayer and have them drop it for you or just like start a new game plus and get a second weapon super easily power stancing will give you the possibility to further double the damage that you already doubled with the previous items i think that in total you reach about 500 percent damage increase with all of these items the power stancing and the buffs you apply to your character and of course what i recommend is to duplicate the ashes of war which you do at the round table hold blacksmith but make sure you have some lost ashes of war in your inventory there's multiple ways to find these there's plenty of guides out there for them and you should also have at least one of them by the time you reach these points in the game doing this will give you the possibility to apply two instances of the royal knight's resolve for the first one you have to make sure that you start with the left hand weapon first and buff it so that you can switch the primary right one and then apply the buff a second time without removing the buff on the first weapon and from here on you can simply go ahead and use the l1 instead of the typical r2 so that you can perform a heavy jump attack with both of the weapons at the same time instead of only one of them and in total this is going to bring you to that crazy high damage number that you see everybody popping off all the time of course giving you the possibility to just destroy most of the enemies in the game and completely obliterate anything else that might have too high hp for their own good in any case this is it with the build totally let me know down below what's your opinion of it if you're still using strength or if you switch to something else and also if you are using any other type of setup similar to this thanks so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video